Welcome back. It is still plus politics. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has asked the federal government of Nigeria to quickly attend to their demands, noting that they are tired of ongoing strike action. This was contained in a statement issued at a press conference on Friday by the Akure Zone of the Union, which comprised uh, ch the chairman of the Federal University of Technology, Akure, Dr. Olainka Awokwetu, Ekiti State University, Dr. Kayode Arogundadi, Obafemi Awolowo University, Dr. Adiola Egbedokun, and Federal University uh, Oyeikiti, Dr. Gabriel Omonijo. In the statement, ASU said that the lingering industrial action of the union was to get the federal government to fulfill the agreement of 2013 and 2019 and not primarily about integrated personnel and payroll system, IPs. ASU also asked the federal government to pity the children of Nigerians attending public schools who have been sitting at home due to the strike, uh, uh, due to the strike and backed upon by the union. Joining us to discuss this, we have uh, Professor Adibayo Kolawali of the Federal University, Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kucha, and also a public affairs analyst, Alester Wilkos. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening, Kaya. It's a pleasure being with you this evening. Yeah, good to see you again. Um, Prof, let me start with you. Uh, are you part of this, uh, uh, do you subscribe to this move by ASU? Because, okay, let me not preempt what people have said because uh, some people will react in a different way. Let me hear your view first. Okay. Um, I am a member of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. I am a former uh, secretary of my branch, the UNA branch, and a former vice chairman of that branch. So, and I fully support the ongoing strike. Now, what I mean is the position now that um, you are not even perturbed about the IPs. You are more interested in the fact that children are staying at home. So the government should take the issue of your demand seriously. That's actually what I meant. Okay. Yeah. You see, you realize that most academic staff of uh, Nigerian universities have their children in universities in Nigeria. So naturally, as parents, we are concerned uh, about the long uh, span of the strike. But the issues are still important. Uh, the issues are to the extent that Nigerian universities are not what they ought to be. And we have had previous agreements with the federal government of Nigeria on how best to move us closer to um, being at par with uh, other universities elsewhere in the world. And Unfortunately, uh, federal government have been um, have been remiss in its duties to those agreements. So yes, we are concerned that um, this strike is going so long and students are the receiving end. But we also firmly believe that the issues we are fighting for is as important for us as stakeholders as for the students that are at home at this time. Okay. Thank you so much. I only that. doubt whether or not our federal government realized that because obviously most of their own children are not in this industry. Okay, that, that's a point to note. So let me quickly get Alester's uh, opinion on this. I recall some of your position on the ASU strike. Let me listen to it again, whether you've changed your position. Thank you very much, Kennedy. I've not changed my position. I think uh, the ASU strike is one... Um, it's one disservice to the nation. And uh, I, I, I'm surprised at the hypocrisy of the people that raised that communique, uh, talking about uh, the federal government answering them fast. Now, a strike that has been declared since March. And uh, the base of that strike initially was the IPPIS uh, problem. They didn't want to be subjecting their salary to public scrutiny through the IPPIS. And so that was the basis upon which they went on that strike. And that was since March, before the lockdown, the coronavirus lockdown, and other accessory issues that arose. So for me, uh, it's, 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 for me, it's got hypocrisy. 
if, if I should begin to talk at this time, thinking that the federal government can be uh, blackmailed into rushing in and uh, taking note some actions that either to in the past, some other decisions has taken that were not thought through, well thought through. Uh, I appreciate the position of the prof uh, talking about uh, the standard of uh, uh, the facilities in universities. I agree. This uh, standards has to be improved upon. But you also know that the agreement reached in 2013, whereby an, a, a, an obnoxious, in fact, I'll call it irresponsible obnoxious agreement, was reached in 2013, whereby the, the government was to cop out one point, is it 1.3 or 1.2 trillion naira? 1.3 trillion naira for infrastructure development of universities over a 10 year period or whatever. Now, that agreement for me is the most ridiculous, most uh, most uh, unfortunate agreement because that agreement do not do not do not even make provision as to where the funds is going to be sourced from. The source of that funding was not made, and that is independent of the current funding for universities, whereby the salaries, allowances, other elements of lecturers are paid, universities are maintained. Now, this is additional funding of 1.3 trillion over a 10-year period in a country where our revenue profile keeps building by the day. We do not want government to raise taxes. We do not want government to improve, uh, to, to, to raise revenue. But we are asking government, we made an agreement, we're asking government to cop out 1.3 trillion additional expenditure on the investment. Sincerely, I think mean that there is that, that agreement has had in its addendum sources of that funding. I will be very home, home with it. But okay. since there was none, we just play to the gallery. The university is supposed to be the highest echelon of, intelli of intelligentsia, intellectuals that are vast in economy, in science, in political economy, and everything. And you know the revenue profile projection of the country's growth in the next 10, 20 years, and know if the country has that capacity. Okay. If they don't have, where will the fund come from? So Alexa. these things are lacking. So for me... Alessa, I, I, I wish I am the one to engage you on this, but thank God you have an ASU representative. We will explain. Now, what Alessa has brought in is that shouldn't there be a way of giving in from ASU? Because if ASU is saying that consider the children, are they also constricting the children in giving in some of these demands? Prof. I, I, I think Alessa... Um it's unfortunate that um, you have uh, bought into the uh, drama being circulated by the federal government of Nigeria. Uh, the strike by ASU did not start uh, with EPS. That's a major misconception. Uh, the strike originally started with a warning strike on the renegotiation of the 2009 agreement. And in 2013 and 2019, uh, the federal government set up uh, different committees uh, on this re renegotiation. But the renegotiation did not actually take place uh, because it kept being postponed on the altar of, okay, uh, we will meet, we will meet. Up till a stage where Aswa had to come in and say, look, we need to actually discuss this. So, that's one big one. The other big one was the issue of the revitalization fund that you mentioned. The revitalization fund was a mutual agreement that the state of our universities are terrible and we need to improve them. And we look at the amount of resources. And please get it correctly. Thorough research was done on the amount of resources that was required. And the Nigerian Ministry of Finance was duly represented in all of these meetings. And they know the assigned positions where the uh, resources for funding this will come. You recall that in that year, uh, 2014, the year after 2013, federal government released the sum of 200 uh, billion naira to the university in the hope that subsequent uh, tranches will be released on an annual basis for the development of the universities. This was not done. So this is a cause for worry. And every time there is a ranking of the universities across the globe. Everybody talks about Nigerian universities not being there. So the concern for the children has always been paramount in all of these discussions. Because what is the point of having a group of 100 students 
in a, in a laboratory that is built for 20 students. So yeah, you call it hypocrisy is amusing because this has always been something that has guided the deliberations and discussions from an ASU perspective. And as I pointed out in my introduction, our children go to these same universities that where we work in. Unfortunately, the children of the representatives of government are not in these same universities. So they can afford to toy with the future of Nigerian children. And that is the point that that community was making. It, the, that community is not saying that that is the reason we should call off our strike, or that is the reason the federal government should come to the table. It is only pointing out to the fact that we are concerned about it, but we still maintain that the issues at stake are important and we need to pay desired attention to. Okay. Now, coming to resources to deal with the funding of universities, how can you convince me that the federal government does not have resources to fund existing universities, yet new universities are being created by the same federal government? So there are issues of insincerity and lack of transparency all over. The EPS issue came in as an additional issue. And you recall that when the strike started, ASU members didn't join EPS. And note that universities are not the only institution of government, not on EPS. But ASU members didn't join. Okay. Because they told us that unless okay. you uh, sign in and make your fingerprints, you cannot join EPS. That is the way it was wired. But okay, unfortunately, prof. we realized that that was a lie because subsequently prof. they migrated us. Until prof, I, I, I will come back to you. Let, let me bring in Alesta again. Uh, Alesta, while you're going to react to some of the comments he made, I want you to also include this in your response. And uh, looking at the communique again, the communique mentioned that we are not even looking at the IPPIS issue. We are looking at other demands, which include bring these facilities up to the standard we're talking about, attend to the agreement you made, which you also mentioned in 2013, and we've seen government saying that no thanks to the past government, but whose fault is it? An agreement was signed and government is a continuum. I, I, I agree, Kayo. I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying the probe. I wish uh, it was one of my lectures when I was in the university. It's <laughs> quite sound and, uh, and quite technical. <laughs> I will have been an, acad an, an academia in myself, if not for a few things that uh, I tried to go into the industry. At the time, I was. You don't, you uh, don't want to be. You I don't want to be paid university. small money, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, as, as I was leaving the university, I was earning. But my first job, I earned more than my lecturer, as a as, as a as a graduate trainee. You see, now. that has long changed. That has long changed, and. Uh, and uh, the universities are having a very fair deal, uh, more than quite enough. If, if I had known, I would have taken that pay cut then and joined the university system. Maybe I would have been a senior pro by now. <laughs> you know, but that is just, just, just by the way. Um, sincerely speaking, um, I, I, I know that a lot has been done at the university system. And the prof, you, you, you will agree with me that uh, the nation, that's why I said, ASU, as the echelon as the think tank of the nation, because I mean, there's not that group of persons that possesses the capacity, the resourcefulness, the intellectual group as ASU in this country, in terms of trade union, in terms of the grouping. I mean, if you come to we, the accountants, we only have one area we focus on. The lawyers have one area they focus on. The engineers, one area, but ASU is a conglomerate of every facet of the, of, 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 of the nation's intellectual capacity. So ASU should have known very well, the fact that there are certain demands that cannot be met, cannot on the line. Now, when ASU rewrote the general administration in 2009 and 2013 to sign in that obnoxious uh, 1.3 billion, as at that time, oil price was um, a level was uh, almost at uh, 100 to 140 dollars per barrel, which is our main thing. 100 to 140 dollars per barrel, and as at that time, if as even as at that time. The government was reneging because there are competing forces to, 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 to national resources, competing forces. Now, uh, UNESCO wants the, the country to spend 26% on education. Um, other, uh, the health group wants the country to spend 20% on health. Now, we want the country to spend about 30% on uh, defense. So there are competing 
And if the economy is not expanding, you discover that it will be difficult to meet such demand. As, as such, that should not even be a purpose of us to strike because they are, they are, they are not living in, 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 in mass or in other countries. They are living in the country and they know the revenue profile of the country. So that's why I'm saying the, the issue of where this will come from, where this funding will come from, should there be a shortfall in revenue? Where will it come from? Today, we are talking about ranking Nigerian universities. Nigerian universities, the private universities, are the cheapest in the world. I was with the I was with the NMA, uh, uh, sorry, not NMA, and um, uh, National Institute of Resident Doctors uh, President one time, and I said the cost of paying a doctor in Nigerian university is a peanut compared to what is to train a doctor in the UK. Now the same thing to the Nigerian universities, and thank God for it. If not for for that free education we enjoy in Nigerian universities, maybe some of us will not be able to go to university. But Nigerian University is the cheapest in the entire world. So if you are looking for a facility that will match where it is in the world, then you must charge adequate fees because there is no way, even in the UK, in America, in Australia, wherever it is, okay. people pay school fees to the university. Alessa. But in Nigeria, it's not so. We don't pay school fees in federal universities. So where will this money come from? And then we are talking about open universities. It is because of the population. When I was in university, we were just 180 in a, in a faculty, 183 in a faculty. In my department, we are 43. Today, that 180 is not even up to one department in the university. Okay. So the Alistair, I, 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 I'm so sorry. You're used to this. Our time is always fast spent. But I will be fair to both of you in 30, 30 seconds, please. I beg you, 30, 30 seconds. What is the way out? Because it has become a culture. One government comes in, another government comes in, different parties, strike has become a recurring decima. Prof, what's the way out in 30 seconds? Okay, uh, thank you very much. I, I, I think it is unfair to say that ASU is not providing solutions. Uh, I mean, a very recent example is the UTAS that has just been provided by ASU and that has been tested by government. The, you see, the World Bank and uh, foreign bodies will come in and advise our government. Our government will listen to them and not listen to our own intellectuals locally. Do you know that on EPs, the um, consortium that developed EPs charges 23 naira for each person that enrolls on EPs. Meanwhile, we have provided an homegrown solution done by our own intellectual, which is superior to EPs, that's the UTAS, at no cost. So the federal government, yet the federal government is unwilling to, to take it. So the decision making power that government has, well, it, it, they have not been afraid, doing it. I'm afraid we might not be able to take more solutions. You, and dialogue. Yeah, you've been able to react to an opinion, but trust me, maybe the solution will continue on all our social media. Your time starts now, Alester. No, no, certainly, uh, certainly, I appreciate the university. I, I'm a product of the university system, but at the same time, I am not in support of this constant strike. Strike should not even be had in our universities any longer. ASU should continue to train out quality students because right now we don't have quality students. And it's not true that the, the children of the government are not in the schools. Yeah, some of them are there. Not every government officer has their children abroad. Even ASU members do not send their children to government school. They send them to private universities. Most of us in the they are children in private universities. Okay. So, strike <laughs> should not be the option. Okay, let's start. Strike should be. Let's start. Thank you so much. Time. This only means that this conversation would have to continue on all our social media platforms. Prof, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let this conversation continue. A lot of people will read up some of your continued uh, uh, conversation with Alesta. Alesta, I think you're already a subscriber, so let's continue the conversation there. And to our viewers, I'm sure you still want the conversation to continue, but we have to go for news. But before we go, let us take a short breather, and I will be giving you my take on this issue. Please don't go anywhere. And here's my take. So sad that lessons are yet to be learned. It is even sadder that while I was in school, I meant in university, we were constantly being reminded of good old days, of when our tertiary institutions 
competed favorably with University of London and some top universities across the world. While we admitted that that was our fate to bear with over 150 students to a lecturer in classroom and that very soon things would get better. No, it, wasn't, it was not getting better, it was rather getting worse. The saddest part of this whole issue is that the folks in power are immune from this continued depreciation of standards of the facilities as their children are in their numbers schooling abroad. And for those who are relatively moderate, uninterrupted private universities are their quick options. As long as the lecturers stick to their guns and government refuse to budge, let the two parties remember that it may no longer be a case of the grasses that suffer when two elephants fight. It may turn out to be the onlookers of the fallen and helpless elephant. And that's my take on today's edition of Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns same time on Monday when we'll be coming up with fresh edition of the program. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladendi.